I believe that to bring change, you gotta be change. But first, you gotta see change. Somewhere out in the distant future, dial it up from long range and set free change. Let it rain. But I gotta be honest. It seems like every time we get near change, we steer clear of change. And the only excuse I can come up with is that we fear change. That's a bit strange. Isn't this precisely what the gospel message is about? About one man who came and suffered so that sin could be covered, death smothered, captives recovered, the truth discovered and change ushered in? So yeah. I've been thinking, but thinking about change is nothing more than an abstraction. Thoughts alone can be a distraction because they're only a fraction unless they begin to gain traction and start a chain reaction of changing action, a transaction where we begin to do the all important work of the grocery store clerk. Making change. All right, so we, uh, we're jumping, it's February. Oh my gosh, wow, right? So that means all the gyms are starting to empty out. All the New Year's resolutions, I'm going back to the gym, I'm gonna get in shape. And that means by now you've blown your diet at least once, right? Whatever New Year's resolution probably uh, is off track or something crazy. And So what we decided to do this year in 2020 was we wanted to take some time and just elevate our spiritual lives. Just put everything we could, all of our energy, all of our efforts into just making sure that our spiritual lives are moving in the right direction, moving up and moving into a place of depth, a, a place that is better and more unique and more powerful in our lives. And, and here's what I know, you know, I'm not going to do this, but if I ask everybody in the room, do, do you feel like your spiritual life is exactly where it needs to be? Most of us would say no. Most of us would say, you know, yeah, I, I have a spiritual life, I think I'm spiritual, I have some piece of spiritual, spirituality to myself, but I'd really like to get better. And so our, our task this year in 2020 is to just challenge every one of us to be on a spiritual journey that's going to take us to a place where at the end of this year we're spiritually more mature, we're spiritually more developed than we were when we started the year. Because if we're honest, we all feel spiritually weak at times, especially in those moments when we get challenged, in those moments when we have to do some spiritual heavy lifting and we're not ready for it. And so we thought it was important this year to really come into the new year and say, look, it, it, the world is changing, the world is moving so fast, we, we could complain about it or we could develop ourselves. We could become more spiritual. We could start working on our spiritual shape. Uh, because here's the thing, physically we get out of shape and then something comes along that's real demanding. I, I saw something the other day, uh, it was like a commercial, and they, it was Daniel Craig, the guy who plays James Bond, and he was running and he was out of breath. And somebody looked at him and went, James Bond, and he's like, <gasps> and he's like, the guy's like, okay, obviously not James Bond, right? Because we all get out of breath, we all get physically challenged, right? And same is true in our spiritual lives. We get spiritually challenged, and if we're not ready for it, we're spiritually out of breath, right? And so we thought, it, it, you could work on your emotional life, you can work on your physical life, you can go to the gym, you can go see somebody, a counselor or something, but where are you going to get your spiritual life developed? Well, this is, this is the place. So we thought, let's be serious about this. Let's be serious about starting off 2020 with an idea of spending our time this year developing our spiritual lives together. And so here's what we also said very early on in this year. We said, look, it's going to look different for everybody. Every, your, your spiritual workout's going to look different than anybody else's or everybody else's spiritual workout, including the person you live with in your home, including the people who are best friends with you, including your siblings. Yours is going to be uniquely tailored to you because you're different from anybody else. Your experiences are different. Your family background, your religious nature, your thought process about spirituality is different from anybody else's. So you're just going to be in a different place. Now, how true is it that if you and your spouse decide to go into a, a diet regime 
together, the, the reality is that's going to look different. You're not going to always eat the same thing or, or work out the same way, and you're all, neither of you are going to have the same kind of results, right? I mean, isn't it true, that women, that, that it sucks when you're in a diet thing with a guy and the guy loses like five pounds in the first two days? And you look at a piece of cake and gain 10 pounds, Right? Uh, am, I, am I right? I mean, that, that stuff happens, right? And so it's got to look different for all of us. But what we know we need to do is this. Our goal is this. First teaching note, in your teaching notes this morning, we give you something to write down because we believe that if you write something down, you remember it longer. So we ask you to just write some things down or we pop some things up on the screen and we really try to hit a couple key points and here's the first one. Our goal is to raise up a group of spiritually developed, spiritually mature believers who can change the world. Who can change the world. We believe that the world can be changed not because we said so but because God has said so over and over again that I put you in the world so that the world might be different. And Jesus is talking to his disciples in the passage that you heard read and said, look, there is something critical we all need to be doing. There's something massive we all need to be doing. There are mountains that need to be torn down. There are things that need to be changed. There are aspects of life that need to be different in the world. And if we're going to be a part of that, then we need to raise up a group of spiritually developed, spiritually mature believers who can change the world. If, if that's what we do, we believe that our neighborhoods, our families, our, our workplaces could all be different because we bring something, right? We bring a spiritual depth into the worlds that we live in and grow into. Now, here's what the, the thing we need to do then. If we're asking this question about spiritual growth and where we're at, then the question we first have to ask is, where are you on a spiritual continuum? So we put that up on the screen not to make you feel bad, but to ask you just where do you think you are on the spiritual continuum? Are you all the way to the left? Are you all the way to the right? Somewhere in the middle? Do, do you feel like, you know, I've got some things going, but there are lots of other things I'd like to work on? We all know that we all are working on this. Every one of us is working on this. There's, as a matter of fact, here's what we all know is that this doesn't stop until you breathe your last breath. God is going to be at this. God is going to be working on this in your life and in mine because this is a journey. We're all on the journey together until we breathe our last breath. And then on the other side of heaven, everything's perfect. Everything's done. You don't have to work on it anymore. God, I'm looking forward to that. I'm not in a hurry. <laughs> I'm not in a rush. But... How wonderful will it be to get up, well, not have to get up, I'm going to be awake all the time, it's, you know, um, and I'm in heaven, and just to be spiritually there every day, like right where I've always wanted to be. And, but right now I'm not, so I, I'm on this scale somewhere, and, and I think we all need to say this is where I'm at on the scale somewhere, and, we, and recognizing that even if you're all the way far to the right, you still have places to go, room to grow, things to do, Right? So we want to work on that with you. I, I, I remember very clearly working with an individual in my life, a member of our congregation years and years and years ago, who had ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. And, and he had a, the situation developed in, in about a, almost a six-year time period. And I remember being his pastor and remember sitting and talking with him about spiritual things and realizing that even though he was growing stronger to the right as his life was diminishing, he was still on that growth pattern until the very end, which is what all of us are doing, right? We're all in a spiritual growth pattern until the very end, until God calls us home, till we take the last breath. So the question you have to ask is then, where am I out on the scale and where do I want to be? Where do I want to be? Because what Jesus says over and over again in Scripture, what he says in the passage we read today and in, in lots of other places, is you should not be content with where you're at because great things can happen. Great things can happen. So let's not be content with where we're at. Let's not like, well, I went to church this week. and I, you know, there were, I remember like on Tuesday I prayed once. And, um, and I heard the Bible because somebody said Jesus in my office. Um, <laughs> You got that? All right. Yeah. Anyway. So where, where do we want to be? Do we, we, do we want to be at the next spot? Do we want to be at the next place? Do we want to grow a little bit more? And if you do, then let me just challenge you. Let me say this to you. It's going to take some effort. Next teaching note. Being spiritual takes some effort. 
It's just going to take some work on our part. It cannot be something that just happens to you. Being spiritual takes some effort. At least being spiritual in a place where it's a journey, it's a path, takes some effort. It's one thing to recognize, yes, I'm a spiritual being. I have a spirituality to myself. But it's another thing to recognize that where I'm at spiritually is this spot, and where I want to be spiritually is in a different spot. I want to be better at this. So our goal is this. Here's, here's baseline. Here is our definition of what it looks like for us to be spiritual people who are healthy. Here's what we're asking. I'm going to put this up on the screen. It says that it, it, the definition for us of being a strong spiritual person is being a person who is able to connect with that which is spiritual and in turn have that connection guide, direct, influence, and control their lives. To connect with that which is spiritual, which is God living in us, right? To connect, to be able to connect it to that which is spiritual, that spiritual aspect of God living in us, the spiritual part of the Father. The, remember, it's, it's the three parts of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're connecting with the Holy Spirit in us. Jesus' promise was that when I leave, I'm going to give you my spirit. I'm going to come and spiritually reside in you. You can connect with me. You can do it constantly. And so being a person of faith, being a person who connects spiritually and has these things happen, that that connection is able to guide us, direct us, influence us, and control our entire lives. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to say that with me. Will you do that? Ready? Being a, being a person who is able to connect with that which is spiritual and in turn have that connection guide, direct, influence and control their lives. All right, so if that's the goal, if that's the baseline, right? To be able to connect and have that connection be something that we draw on every single day as a true aspect of, of the guidance, direction, influence, and the controlling factor of my life and your life. If we want to get there, then there's some work we need to do. And so the question is, how do we do that? How do we get to a place of spiritual maturity in our lives? Well, for me, the first thing I have to say for all of us, and, and when I read this passage and that we read today in Mark chapter 11, when I see lots of other places in the Bible, the very first thing we all understand is spiritual maturity in this journey is, is that the more I know, the more I don't know. Socrates said the same thing about intelligence. The more I know, the more I know I don't know. Right? The more spiritual I get, the more spiritual I want to become. Because it's a never-ending pool. It's a never-ending resource that God has in your life. If, the more spiritual you want to become, the more God will pour out on you the spiritual things of life. And he's got tons and tons. It's an endless resource of spiritual fitness for us, so to speak. So there's, a, there's never a stopping point. So the question we have is, so then where is the starting point? Because the thing is, if you walk into a gym today, if you walked into the gym this afternoon, you, you'd want to talk to somebody about where do I start, right? Where do I start? Do I pick up the five pounders? Do I pick up the 25 pounders? Do I pick up the 50 pounders? This is going to be crazy. I'm going to be hurting for days, right? You know, where do I start? Well, let's start, let's talk about over the next couple weeks where we start and, and some of the, the spiritual tools that we can use to grow ourselves spiritually. And the first one is this. The first one is prayer. We chose this passage today because it's Jesus talking to his disciples about the importance of prayer in their lives. And, and it, the base definition for this, the base definition for prayer is simply a, a conversation with God. Your conversation with God. What does your conversational life with God look like? What does your way of talking with God look like? Jesus says to his disciples, if you have faith, you'll talk to the Father, and the, you and the Father can have this conversational life. And So obviously it takes faith. I mean, the first thing we have to understand about prayer is that if, if we're going to pray, we have to actually believe that there's a God who's listening and that there's a God who can do something about it. So therefore, one of the things we all need is some faith. If we're going to have a powerful prayer life, the start of our prayer life has to be faith in God. 
to believe that God is actually out there, that God is actually listening. Here's the posture I believe God gets into when we decide to pray. God does this. When, when you start saying, hey God, I don't know if you're out there. Hey God, uh, good morning or dear Lord or whatever it is. When you announce that you're coming before God and you're going to talk to God, you know what I believe God does? Here's what I believe God does. Take a moment. Take all eyes up here for a minute. Here's what I believe God does. Go on. Yeah? Really? Oh, that's awesome. Now, you could ask yourself, well, if God is, knows everything, if God is omniscient, omnipresent, if God already knows everything, then why do I have to bother talking to God? Because here's the posture of God when you pray. Hi. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here. Like, yeah, I saw it all, but tell me about it anyway. Right? I mean, I, I, some of you have heard me tell the, the story of, I remember I was in the backyard. I have two brothers, one older, one younger. And I remember the challenge was that on the swing, right, to be able to jump off the swing at the highest level you could get it at, right? And land and stick the landing, right? Anybody with me? Is this, this is not a guy thing. I've seen girls do this, right? This is, you know, you're swinging and then you release and you go out into the air and you get that moment of hang time and then gravity kicks in. And then the idea is to stick the landing, right? And I remember running into the house, mom, 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 you're not going to believe what I just did. And my mom had been standing at the kitchen window doing dishes, watching the whole time. And my mom got down and said, what did you do? Because even though she had seen it all, anybody with me here? Even though she had seen it all, she just wanted to hear it from me. She wanted me to tell the story. She could have said, yeah, I was watching out the window, go back and play. She could have, but she didn't. Instead, what she did is she wanted, she pulled me in by getting her hands down on her knees and saying, tell me all about it, right? I mean, that's what God does in your life and in my life. He wants us to come before him and pray. And he says, look, if you do this, if you have this kind of connection with me, Jesus tells us in this passage that amazing things are possible. Because you see, God loves us and God has unending resources. And if we step into this place of having a conversation with God, some pretty amazing things are possible. Some of you have seen some pretty amazing things happen because you had a conversation with God and you said, Lord, I want to meet the right person. Lord, I'd love to, love to have the right job. Lord, direct me to the right city, the right town, the right home. Lord, put me, my kids in the right school district. Lord, just teach me how to better my relationships. I mean, some of you have prayed some amazing prayers. Some of you have prayed some prayers for healing, for new life, for possibility, for turnaround, for recovery. Some of you have seen some pretty incredible things happen. And I believe that when we pray, we are tapping into something that is limitless, unending, resources that are abounding. So, so I want to I point out some key things that I believe prayer does for every single one of us with the understanding that in this process, you're going to connect with a piece of this in, in all three of the key uh, areas that I want to talk about here for just a minute. So if you got your notes ready, we're going to just pop these three up on the board, up on the screen, up on the board, like I'm in a class. Um, sorry, I'll write them on the board. Right, uh, so here we go. Um, the first one is this. When you pray... When you pray, you're tapping into a source of refreshment. You're tapping into a place of refreshment. Because here's what I know about all of us. This world will drain everything out of you that it can. Right? Can I get an amen? Like, how many of you this week just like, you walked in here this morning like, I so need to be here. I just need a little bit of refreshment in my life. I need restored. I re need renewed. I just need the, that connection with something bigger than myself, with God who is just there, who can pour into me and make me feel better, make me just re feel revived. We need refreshed because we tend, whether it's at home, whether it's at work, whether it's in the culture that we live in, no matter where it is, the busyness of our schedule, the, the conflicts in government and all the stuff that's going on, you know, Calgon, take me away. Three people in the room got that. Like, wow. Just note to self, take that joke out of the, just, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the, the reality is we just get so drained. And the only way that we're going to be ready to give again 
is if we are refreshed. You see, you cannot go to the well and pull out some living water for somebody else if that water's all gone because the only thing that you're going to get is the muck at the bottom of the well. Unless you come back to the Father on a regular basis through prayer and say, Lord, you just need to refresh me, refill me, you will get to that point where you're frustrated, angry, unreasonable, hard to live with, I don't like being there when I'm there. I don't like being in those places when I'm there, and I just need to come back and say, Father, just refresh me, refill me, I'm empty, I'm, I just restore my life, my spiritual life. Just, I'm empty and I've got nothing to give to anybody else. Lord, I need you. I need you. So bring me back. The first thing we do in prayer is we find refreshment. The second thing, the second key thing that I believe happens is we connect to the source of all things. In this passage, it says that if you come to the Father and in faith believe, you can do anything. Anything is possible. Mountains can be thrown into the sea, but you've got to believe. If we believe, we're coming to the source of all power, of all strength, of all might, of all possibility. God can do anything. God can move mountains. I believe that. I've seen it happen. So we, when we pray, we come to the source of all things. And in that source, we find an amazing source of energy, an amazing source of refreshment, an amazing source of power, an amazing source of contentment, an amazing source of peace. Things that we need that can only be given by the Father, the one who is the source of all things, the one who is the source of your life and mine. And so if I'm going to have something happen in my life, if I'm going to see correction, I'm going to see refinement, I'm going to see good things, I want to come to the source of my life. I can go lots of places. I can go to work and start talking to people. I can go to you know, the internet and find somebody who can tell me whatever I, it is I want to hear. But the truth is I need to go to the source. And when we pray, we connect to the source. But third, there's something even greater that happens. We connect to, to ultimately to all the resources that God has for your life and mine. We find refreshment, we connect to the source, and then we connect to the ultimate level of resource in your life and in mine. What is it that you need? What is it you need right now? Is it just a little peace of mind? Is it a peace in your heart? Is it an answer to a question that's been driving you nuts for days or weeks? Is it a result? Is it a, is it a future? Is it a picture that you need that only God can bring? You've got to come before God who is the ultimate resource in your life. This passage is clear. You must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. And I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe you received it, it will be yours. Now, hear me. I am not getting the Bentley I'm praying for. God is like, really? Nah. Not going to have it. You don't need that thing, right? I got a 2004 tr pickup truck. Man, I love it. This is going to beat that thing into the ground. God's like, that's exactly where I want you to be. But there are other things I want for you. And my job is to tune into those things, find what those things are, and start praying for those things that God wants for my life. And when I do, God says, I will move mountains to make those things happen. And I want to see that happen in your life. So the first thing we need to do as we step into the spiritual adventure is to find our prayer lives.